Hey everyone, Renee here. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I'm super excited because we are starting Stabathon. Stabathon, if you don't know, is a week long readathon that is hosted by some of my good friends. We have Naomi from Naomi's Library, Cami from Burroughs and Books, and Sav from Riveting Reads. It is going to be going on all week. It ends on the 10th and it sounds so fun. They have a bingo board. I'm not necessarily trying to get bingo, but they do have a lot of fun prompts and all of the prompts are connected to horror franchises and films that we all know and love. And I will pop it up here so that you guys can see. Boop, 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 boop. Now, I don't know how many books or prompts I'm going to get to this week. Um, reading several books a week is a little difficult for me because I am typically busy, but I do have at least three that I definitely plan on getting to. The first one is the audiobook for Sharp Objects by Gillian Flynn. This one I'm going to be reading for the Halloween prompt, which is read a book with black or orange on the cover. And as you can see, Sharp Objects is a predominantly black cover. So I'm going to be reading this. I'm very interested. I've never actually read a Gillian Flynn book before. I have watched the Gone Girl movie, but I've never read one of her books. So I am intrigued to see how I think about this. Then the next book I'm going to be reading is Cam Slaughter by Sergio Gomez, which I will be reading for the Get Out prompt, which is read a book by a BIPOC author. This is a slasher book. Um, I'm not quite sure how I feel about it. It has a lot of mixed reviews. Um, people say it's really campy and I'm okay with that, um, but we'll see. I'm just here for a fun slasher ride. Like I really just want that vibe. Um, and then the third book that I definitely plan on getting to is The Last Time I Lied by Riley Sager. Now I have been making my way through Riley Sager's books this year and so far I'm pretty impressed. So I hope that I really enjoy this one. Yeah, those are the three books that I definitely plan on getting to for the readathon. If I can continue, I would love to read more, but I'll kind of pick them as I go. And obviously we'll watch some scary movies and just have a good spooky time. And yeah, I'm really excited. So I am gonna go on with my day and we're just gonna get started. Good morning. It is Stabathon day one and I surprisingly have been doing well. And it's only 9 a.m. But um, I was able to start like at midnight while I was waiting for my YouTube video to export. I was able to start The Last Time I Lied by Riley Sager. I'm about two chapters in, like 20 pages. But I also, on my commute to work, started Sharp Objects by Jillian Flynn. And I already got 20% in because the audiobook's not that long. So I already have two books going by 9 a.m. And I... I'm proud because I didn't expect that to happen um but the prompts I'm currently reading are Friday the 13th and oh gosh what is sharp objects Halloween so I think that means that I'm going to watch those movies soon I think what I'm gonna do because I love how this readathon is like um built around uh movie like horror movies and stuff that I'm going to watch the corresponding movie or at least one from the series um her prompt that I read. So a Friday the 13th rewatch and a Halloween rewatch are on the way. But I am going to work now, so I'm going to go. Okay, so it is day two of Stabathon. I didn't really update you anymore yesterday because I was so tired. But I don't know what has come over me, but I am in the middle of three books and I'm actually reading all three. <laughs> So I'm reading um, The Last Time I Lied physically. I have the physical book, it's just downstairs. And I am about 50 pages into it. Um, I've been reading that at night, but it's only day two. So hopefully I'll get more read tonight. Um, Cami, Naomi, and Sav are doing reading sprints over on Naomi's channel. So I'm definitely gonna be reading that one because that's the one I'm most behind on. So hopefully I'll be able to pick that one up a little bit more. I also have been listening to Sharp Objects by Jillian Flynn on my commute to work, and I'm 75% through the audiobook for that, and it's weird. Um, there's definitely some messed up things in that book. I don't know how I feel about it just yet. It's definitely dark. It's definitely creeping me out, um, but I'm really intrigued to see where it's going to go because at the moment, I'm not quite sure. Like, I have my speculations of who it is that is, like murdering these girls but 
I'm not 100% sold yet, so we'll see. And then I also have started the audiobook for Camp Slaughter by Sergio Gomez, and I just started it, so I don't really have a lot of thoughts at the moment, but um, it's definitely kind of gory already, and I'm like, oh. So I just got home from work. I'm gonna go downstairs and make dinner before the sprints, and then I will follow up with you later. reporting with Millie here. She decided that she wanted to be in the shot. Yeah. So I just wanted to update that I finished my first book of Stabathon. I finished Sharp Objects by Gillian Flynn and I did like it. I At first I like wasn't sure but then when you look at it as a whole I'm gonna give it a four out of five star. I did surprisingly predict it kind of early. Not not one thing. There were like two things that shocked me at the end. I guess you could say two twists. The one thing I did predict pretty early on, and then the second thing I did not. And if you hear screaming in the background, my boyfriend's playing video games with his friends, so he gets into it. So we're gonna ignore him, right, Millie? Yeah. And that being said, I'm not saying that it was predictable because the one thing like I would have never figured out, but, um, I did enjoy it. It was different than any other thriller I've read. Um, it was definitely a little bit disturbing and it definitely had some parts where I was like, ugh. But I did really enjoy it. It was make, what are you looking at? <laughs> it was making me side eye like on my way to work. Like I would be like at a red light listening to something and I'd just be like, Like, I would just take side eye the car next to me because I was like, are you hearing this shit? But obviously they're not. I read Sharp Objects for the Halloween prompt, which is read a book with black or orange on the cover. And Sharp Objects is black on the cover. It's mostly black. So I have one prompt down. I'm still in the middle of the last time I lied in Camp Slaughter. I'm definitely going to finish those two this week. Um, and then I'm not sure what I'm going to pick up afterwards. Um, but one thing at a time, we're not going to get ahead of ourselves. I want to finish... The other two so i'm going to read the last time i lied tonight and i'm gonna put on a horror movie in the background i know i said earlier that i was probably gonna watch like the slashers while reading these books but i kind of i got on hbo max and they have all the final destinations and i don't know i'm like feeling it i'm feeling like watching the fourth one because the fourth one is the one that i remember least so I kind of feel like watching that one, but my favorite final destination is the third one. So I might also watch that one. I don't know. It depends. We'll see. Um, oh, and my shirt for the horror shirt of the night, I'm wearing my Freddy shirt. This is actually a men's shirt that I got, but so yeah, I'm going to read and watch and I'll talk to you guys later. back from the gym slash home from work as well I kind of just went to the gym right after work so I got a nice workout in and it felt really good but I made some progress in Camp Slaughter today and I kind of wanted to talk about it because I guess I maybe should have listened to the reviews I mean the reviews aren't awful the, the reviews from what I saw they're not awful but 
I don't know. It's definitely really cheesy. It's nothing special. It, it is fun. Like it's going by really quickly. I'm already 40% through. I don't really like the cheesy end lines. It always ends with something like really cheesy. Um, and it is about a cannibal, but it, I just don't really feel that scared, I guess. Like, I feel like it's more of like a horror comedy because it's not really giving me any fear factor. It's kind of just like every time the guy who's the cannibal like comes into play, it's almost like light, like humorous almost. And I know that that genre is for some people, but I'm just not really that into horror comedy. I like to be scared. Well, I don't know if I like to be scared, but I, if I'm gonna read it, like I wanna be intimidated. I want to have that tense feeling of like, oh my God, what's gonna happen? Like, but this book isn't really doing that. Um, but it's fun, so I'll continue it. I'm definitely gonna finish it soon. It's, I don't have much left. It's only like a 250 page book and I'm on page like 92, so not bad at all. I haven't really read too much more of The Last Time I Lied. I'm only reading it at night before bed and everything else I'm kind of doing throughout the day. So I think that's why it's taking me a little bit longer, but yeah. I am going to change and then go downstairs and watch the football game, edit for a little bit and read. <laughs> So I have finished my second book of Stabathon. I finished Camp Slaughter by Sergio Gomez and I debated like really hard if I wanted to give it a two star or a one star because I wasn't the biggest fan of it. Um, but ultimately I decided to give it a one star because I don't know, I was like doing some reflecting and I had given Mexican Gothic a one star and I honestly don't think Mexican Gothic was the same level of bad as Cam Slaughter. I also might, I usually don't, but I might increase my Mexican Gothic rating to two star, but that's not the point. Um, the point is Cam Slaughter, I read it because I wanted to give it a shot. I am a big fan of slashers, so I thought that it would be really fun and a fast read and quick paced and it was definitely a fast read. The content was just like, there wasn't really a lot to think about, if that makes sense. Um, but that being said, I felt like there was some character development, but there also wasn't. And it just felt like, it's an adult book, right? Cam Slaughter is an adult book, but I felt like I was reading a young adult book because I was like, in my head, I was like, there's no way this is an adult book. like. It was very cheesy, nothing special, your typical slasher, every stereotype you could think of. And I, it wasn't scary at all. And I mean, slashers, they don't have to be scary, but like, I didn't even feel a shred of tense fear or just anything. Like it was almost comical. And like I said earlier, I, I'm not the biggest fan of like horror comedy. So maybe that's why. I don't know if it was its intention to be. my vegan pad thai is done. And it also wasn't very descriptive, which I guess is, is okay, because I don't really need a slasher to be descriptive, but like, I don't know, I really can't explain it. Like, it just felt like a very underdeveloped book. And another thing that I noticed in this book is there was a comment on asexuality that I felt like was completely unnecessary. Um, one of the characters, was like referring to someone else as like an asexual alien and like kind of mocking the person for not being sexual and um i don't know i thought that was really just inappropriate to put in the book um it definitely didn't need to be there and it can be harmful to people who are asexual so um yeah i don't know i just wasn't a fan of that and i wasn't a fan of the writing and i wasn't a fan of the story and i just wasn't a fan so um, I gave it a one star. I feel like this whole entire vlog has been like me after work. No makeup, tired, just like filling you in on the random things that I've managed to read. Um, so I don't know how this is gonna be editing it together, but hopefully it's, it's okay. We'll see. I love that this one girl in the story is like a huge like comic fan. She's She's an artist and she draws and she was just talking about Marvel and I was like, 
that's so cute. Now there is one thing about Riley Sager that I've noticed from reading his books. And when I say read his books, I mean, I've only read like two. I've read Lock Every Door and Home Before Dark and I did like them. And I really wanna like this one, but I feel like with Riley Sager, I'm always very underwhelmed during the first half of his books. So with this one, I'm on page 153 and I'm feeling pretty un underwhelmed. I think so far I, I'm i liking this one the least, but I'm really hoping that'll change because the concept of it is really good. I love a good summer camp thriller, but at the same time, um, I'm not really thrilled. <laughs> Okay, so it is mad late. It's like 2 a.m. But I was on stream with Jan, Cammie, and Christina for a while. Like, I got on because we were streaming Hocus Pocus and I fell asleep, but then I got a second win. So I stayed up for a while and we just chatted and we were reading. So I read a bit more of The Last Time I Lied and I actually picked it up on audiobook. So I was like following along with the audiobook while reading it because. It's definitely not as interesting as some of Riley Sager's other books that I've read. So I was kind of struggling to pay attention. Like I kept like, I was like starting to skim pages and I don't like to do that. So um, my friends were like, well, you know, you should try it on audiobook because that's how they got through it. So I picked up the audiobook and it was going better. And I finally made it to part two. There was something that just happened where I was like, what? I don't even know where this could go. Like. I keep trying to predict it and like I have an idea of where it's gonna go. I actually have two ideas of where it's gonna go. I am liking it so far. It's just like a little bit slower than I was hoping that it would be. But I'm hopefully gonna finish it tomorrow. I'm on page 267. So I'm almost done. Like I wouldn't say almost, but I have like 100 pages left. So I think I can definitely finish this tomorrow and tomorrow is the last day of Stabathon. So that would be perfect. But for now, I'm gonna go to bed because it is so past my bedtime. <laughs> Okay, so it is officially the end of Stabathon, or rather what I am going to be ending now. It is Sunday afternoon and I have finished all three of my books. So I'm very excited about that. I finally finished The Last Time I Lied um, by Riley Sager. And I will talk about that one first because I haven't told you guys about my thoughts yet for the ending. To be honest, last time I had updated you on The Last Time I Lied, I said that I had switched to the audio because I was getting bored. Um, and reading it physically was just not holding my interest as much as I wanted it to. So the audiobook definitely helped kind of move things along smoothly. I was able to pay more attention to the story. And as far as the ending goes, I think that the ending was fairly anticlimactic. I wasn't that thrilled by the ending at all. Um, what I was thrilled about was like the last two pages. I thought the last two pages were the best part of the book, to be honest. And it's unfortunate that it was at the very end. Um, but that's something that I've noticed with Riley Sager. I feel like he has amazing endings, but sometimes the beginning of the books just don't do it for me, except for Home Before Dark. Home Before Dark, I like the whole thing. But I remember reading Lock Every Door and I was also not that impressed in the beginning. Like honestly, the first half of the book, I almost DNF'd it. But then I loved, like loved the ending. But the difference between Lock Every Door and The Last Time I Lied is that the ending of Lock Every Door that made it so great wasn't just two pages. It was like a hundred pages. So it was definitely more interesting to read. It had a better payoff, but The Last Time I Lied it was just anticlimactic for the most part. It was fairly boring for most of the book and I just wasn't really that engaged. Um, but obviously I wanted to know what happened. So Riley Sager does that well, kind of just keeping you guessing. I don't know, I just, it wasn't the best. And I gave it a three out of five for that reason. The last two pages really solidified the three um, instead of like anything lower. So 
yeah, three out of five to The Last Time I Lied by Riley Sager. And then just to recap, I gave a one out of five to Cam Slaughter by Sergio Gomez. And um, what did I read first? Oh, I gave four out of five to Sharp Objects by Gillian Flynn. So those are the three books that I managed to read for Stabathon. All over the board, kind of, um, in terms of my reading for this week, but I am actually really happy with my reading for this week. I have been, as I've said before, in a big slump and I've read maybe like five books in the past two months. So to read three books in the past week, I'm feeling good. And I knew this would happen. Like October would roll around, spooky vibes, horror, thriller, and just overall good reading times. And then for my scary movie, I watched Final Destination 3. And even though it's not scary, I also watched Hocus Pocus um, for just a Halloween spooky vibe type of movie, even though I fell asleep during it. I was on stream with my friends and I knocked, but I still watched, you know, some of it. So I'll count it. <laughs> so yeah, that pretty much does it for this video. This readathon was super, super fun. Thank you so much, Naomi, Cammy, and Sav. This was such a good idea and I had a lot of fun and I hope to do it again next year. So if you like this video, don't forget to hit the thumbs up down below to help support my channel and also subscribe to follow me on my reading journey if you haven't subscribed already. Like always, all of my socials will be listed down below along with all of the hosts for this readathon so you can go subscribe to them as well because they're amazing people. And yeah, once again, I hope you like this video and I will see you in the next one.